Um, welcome to this uh, second webinar in our series of talk on restoring river continuity. Um, my name is Eve Silver and I work for Wetlands International European Association. Um, I will first kick off this session with some practicalities. Um, please note that we're recording this session and that we will publish it online uh, afterwards. So you can find a, a link afterwards on our website. Um, I will mute every, uh, everyone's microphone except for the presenter, Barbara, who will be speaking uh, for up to an hour to give this presentation. Um, at the end of the session, at the end of the presentation, you can uh, post any questions you may have in the chat function on the right. So you can see a panel um, on the right, and here you can post your questions afterwards. Um, I will uh, read out these questions and then Barbara can, uh, can respond to them at the end. We will close this session about an hour and a half from now. Um, and, um, well, please uh, enjoy it. But let me first uh, tell you a bit about um, uh, why Wetlands International and uh, the Italian Center for River Restoration organized this series of webinars. Um, we will explain uh, different methods and challenges of res river restoration, uh, focusing on improving river connectivity. And we hope by sharing this evidence of effective restoration approaches that we can enhance the conditions of European rivers and also uh, enhance implementation of river restoration measures. And um, today we uh, have Barbara Belletti who will be uh, presenting on mapping and assessing discontinuities. Uh, Barbara is a postdoc researcher at the Department of Electronics, Information and Bioengineering of the Politecnico di Milano in Italy. Uh, she's worked there since October 2016, uh, and she's working mainly on a project called AMBER, uh, which deals with the management of river connectivity. Um, in the four years before that, she's been involved as a postdoc researcher uh, together with the University of Florence in another European project on river restoration called REFORM. Uh, she has a PhD in physical geography and a master's degree in conservation and management of natural resources. Uh, and she's been working on rivers since 2007. So her research area includes the analysis of morphological and physical habitat dynamics in rivers and by means of different methods and technologies, such as remote sensing, GIS, and field protocols, uh, including the integration of these aspects within the management of river systems. So I'm sure that Barbara has prepared a very uh, nice presentation for us today, and I would like to give the floor to her now to um, to give her presentation. Thank you. So, uh, hi to all of you. Um, thanks, uh, Yves and uh, Wetland International and uh, CHIRF for inviting me to this session. Welcome to, to all of you. Um, so, during this session today, as uh, Yves introduced it, I, I will introduce you, uh, you in the AMBER project that is uh, age 2020 European founded project on uh, uh, river barriers and then uh, dealing with uh, uh, river uh, continuity. And so I, I will mainly present you um, uh, the effort that we are doing uh, within AMBER to address uh, the topic of river continuity, especially in terms of uh, mapping and assessing uh, these continuities uh, in rivers. Um, so, uh, during the previous uh, session, uh, webinar session, um, the colleague uh, Fernando Maddaleno already introduced you uh, the topic of river continuity and uh, connectivity uh, in the overall uh, context of river functioning. Uh, um, and, uh, but let me... Uh, pointing out uh, some key concepts. Uh, so uh, river connectivity, river continuity, um, it mainly a matter of uh, uh, movement uh, along the, the river system of water, sediments, and organism, but uh, it is uh, only um, linked to uh, human society uh, 
because uh, since river provide us provide to human society a number of uh, ecosystem services uh, that uh, could be linked to our society to our industries uh, agricultural production drinking water and also recreational uh, uh, services services that to some extent are in some cases also linked uh, to the presence uh, of barriers but um, on the other end, the presence of barriers along rivers uh, uh, causes a, a number of detrimental uh, issues uh, to the, the natural components of the river. So, uh, river fragmentation because of barriers, barriers impairs water, sediment, and organisms, and also. Uh, it impairs, it disrupts uh, some of the ecosystem services that river are providing to us. Uh, it, uh, it is well uh, uh, documented, uh, for example, let me, uh, let me tell you about one example of the presence of barriers uh, often disrupt uh, the connectivity of sediment from upstream to downstream along the river network. So blocking sediment upstream a barrier, then the water is uh, uh, down from the barrier is uh, as the, the, the so-called effect of uh, the angry water. So uh, since uh, uh, the river has no longer uh, sediment from upstream, it uh, um, uh, erodes sediments uh, from its own bed and so causing the uh, so-called incision. Incision that uh, through times may lead uh, to the disconnection, not only in the longitudinal term, but also in the uh, lateral extent from the riverbed and uh, so uh, and the floodplain. So floodplains may be also affected by the effect of river barriers uh, uh, along our rivers, and this could have an impact, a several impact also on, for instance, uh, uh, the water availability for our uh, uh, cultivated floodplains. So, um, one of the main problems about river fragmentation is, at least uh, for what concerns uh, uh, Europe, is uh, that we do not really know exactly which is the extent of river fragmentation in our European river. We don't know exa exactly where barriers are located within our rivers, and we do not even know exactly how can we deal with uh, this problem? How can we assess uh, the effects of barriers? How can we uh, monitor uh, the, the, the presence of barriers through time? How can we uh, update our information about the presence of barriers or the, the river fragmentation? Uh, in Europe, uh, we have uh, um, uh, legislation uh, on water management, that is the Water Framework Directive, uh, which aims uh, at reaching uh, the good ecological status or, or potential uh, in rivers, where also river continuity, river connectivity, is considered as, as an important component of the overall ecological status. After uh, the first river basin management plans in 2009, it emerged that uh, many uh, basin, many watersheds failed to meet the target of good ecological status or potential also because of habitat fragmentation, habitat loss and river fragmentation because of the presence of barrier, a problem that has been received very little att attention until uh, uh, recently. Um, unfortunately, the second river basin management plan in 2015 doesn't seem to show any improvement of uh, uh, the 2009 situation. Um, as you can see from, from this picture of uh, uh, the ecological status uh, of European rivers. So, um, we need to continue action uh, to deal with the problem of uh, uh, the ecological status and also of the problem of habitat loss and river fragmentation in uh, European rivers. Uh, but the river fragmentation uh, in Europe is a relatively uh, new problem uh, to some extent because uh, since uh, um, it, it, it was uh, really, really low uh, until the end of the 19th century. So, um, this is a, a report of the European Environmental Agency of 2012 uh, that uh, show uh, 
um, the loss of accessibility for migratory fish due to barriers that are higher than 10 meters. So as you can see in 19th century, our river were uh, still uh, connected in Europe. But the situation start to change quite, uh, um, quite uh, uh, quickly and uh, uh, in, in a hard way uh, in, the, in the 20th century. So rivers started to be disconnected, at least concerning um, um, large high dams, because we started to build high, high dams in our rivers. So this is the situation in 1910. The situation in 1960 uh, is even worse, and then uh, this is the situation today. So this is the situation of um, the inaccessibility of rivers uh, to migratory fish uh, for uh, barrier higher than 10 meters. Um, this is another example. This is a, a Dutch study uh, of the Environmental Assessment Agency uh, of uh, Netherlands in 2015, showing that, uh, um, and this is based on uh, uh, existing information of river fermentation, always on large river uh, systems, and show that, first of all, there is not a complete picture of river fermentation at the European scale, and that, however, with this information, um, the, the fragmentation seems to be quite widespread across Europe, even if it seems that some uh, unfragmented areas still remain, as for, as for example, uh, in the Balkan area. But since this information is scattered, not complete, uh, uh, so we need to, uh, to, to, to deal uh, with uh, this problem. So we need to have a more um, uh, uniform, consistent information of the European scale if you want to uh, manage uh, with the problem of river continuity and river fermentation. So the AMBER project, in that sense, uh, aims to uh, aim at um, address this topic. So uh, the acronym is Adaptive Management of Barriers in European Rivers. And uh, um, um, the aim of, of this project is to improve the, this knowledge about the presence uh, and the extent of river barriers and so river uh, fragmentation in our river and to provide tools and solutions uh, to, this, to this problem. Um, the, the AMBER project is a, a, a H2020 European uh, uh, founded project that involves a, a very a large uh, panel of institutions from universities, so scientific institutions, but also industrial partners, NGOs, and also national and European research centers, including the Joint Research Center from the European Commission. We also have four external advisory boards from all around the world uh, that have uh, experiences uh, uh, with uh, uh, um, river barrier management and also uh, river uh, management uh, in general. And so, uh, let me show you, I hope this work, uh, this is a very short video, uh, promotional video, uh, to show you how uh, Amber, combining uh, effort from different stakeholders, uh, intend to deal uh, with the problem of river barriers in, in Europe. So dealing both the problem of river fermentation, but also uh, dealing with uh, the presence that we, uh, of barriers that are useful for human society and so to provide uh, tools and strategies for an adaptive, adaptive management of river barriers in Europe. Um, so AMBER is a 6.2 uh, million European project uh, that want to, that look at how to manage uh, uh, river barrier, uh, whole river barrier, so not only dams, not just dams, but also other barriers, smaller ones, that uh, have, have represent um, a barrier to migration and movement of fish, but also plants and other animals and also water and sediment, um, so including not, not, not only higher dams, but also wares, sloughs, and also uh, small culverts. Uh, the management solution that we want to develop and implement uh, um, are not only scientific and ecological, so 
are not only um, addressing fish migration, uh, river morphology and habitat loss issue, sediment connectivity, but are also uh, addressing so social um, um, social uh, uh, issues. So uh, we want to deal also with the historical values, the personal values of uh, river barriers, the ecosystem services that rivers and also the presence of barriers are uh, providing us. Uh, and also we want to address uh, the economic uh, impact uh, and issue of barriers. So uh, related to for instance, uh, tourism or fisheries or hydropower uh, production and uh, water supply and, and flood. Um, there are a certain number of challenges uh, uh, for river for restoring river connectivity in Europe that the project uh, aims to deal with. Uh, the first one is that uh, um, the, the real number of barriers in European river is uh, mostly unknown. Uh, there are a, a list of different other issues uh, related to this one. So uh, we need to define which, what is a barrier, which structure represents a barrier. We need to uh, deal with uh, uh, different country coverage of this information at the European scale. And uh, what we uh, have seen from a qualitative uh, survey based on uh, some regional data is that uh, probably the number of barriers in European rivers is, uh, uh, is huge and uh, probably more than what we can mitigate for. So it is estimated that uh, more than one million of dam and wares are impacting our rivers. So the, the challenge is also since this number is so huge, uh, is so big, uh, the, the, the challenge is also uh, to, to provide prioritization tool uh, to manage, to deal with uh, the problem of uh, river fermentation because of barrier. We also need to face uh, with uh, uh, environmental change. It is estimated that the river flow will decrease during next uh, years and decades. Uh, and mostly where water is most needed, so in the southern uh, European regions. And, but on the other hand, we also need to deal with uh, the, increase, uh, the increasing demand of uh, uh, water to meet uh, European energy targets. So um, we, what ch another challenge is that uh, uh, the impact of barrier will certainly worsen because uh, uh, we need we need barrier uh, for different reasons. Um, for instance, uh, despite the slowing large dam construction uh, and even the the removal of large dams in in, in some countries, uh, hydropower in Europe uh, is uh, experiencing uh, a, a great boom. Um, period because uh, in part uh, due to uh, the European funding and the renewable energy directive that has uh, a target of uh, 20 percent uh, energy from renewable renewable energy by mm, 2020 and this target is likely to be um, further increased by 2050. Uh, so to reach to reach the uh, the green uh, gas emission target, the greenhouse gas emission target. So uh, this is uh, one aspect. The other one is there is also um, a matter of storage of this renewable energy uh, by wind or and solar electricity through the uh, pumped uh, hydro storage uh, technology, uh, which is. Uh, mm, for which it is expected an investment of 26 billion of euro uh, between 2013 and 2020. So uh, even if large dams are no longer big in European rivers, a lot of small hydropower plant, hydropower plant and barriers are becoming increasingly popular. Then another challenge uh, for restoring uh, uh, river connectivity in Europe that Amber uh, like to address 
is uh, uh, represented by the fact that, uh, except fish, uh, we know very little about uh, uh, how restoring uh, uh, river connectivity, river continuity um, in rivers, also so concerning other taxa rather than fish, and also concerning fluvial So River continuity is not only a matter of fish. But another problem is uh, that barriers, um, so it is worth mentioning that all barrier can or should be mitigated. For instance, uh, it seems that uh, uh, barriers are uh, a useful, um, useful uh, element uh, to prevent the migration of invasive salmonids. That can also be a vector, for instance, of uh, um, disease for our endemic species. So, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, some barriers could be uh, useful uh, elements in, in, the, in the river. Another aspect here is related to the so social uh, values of barriers. So, some of the barriers in our rivers represent a cultural heritage for uh, our society. Finally, uh, so all these uh, different challenges um, rise up uh, uh, the emergence, uh, the need to um, build decision and prioritization tools of river barriers, um, both in terms of assessing the barrier impact, so how to assess it, which metric to use. For instance, is passability that is traditionally used to assess river connectivity the best metric? to assess uh, the problem of river continuity, river segmentation, river fragmentation, and, and also so in terms of uh, barrier mitigation. So which are um, the benefits of uh, barrier mitigation? Which are, which are the uh, uh, priorities to, um, for barrier mitigation, to mitigate the effect of barriers in our rivers? Fortunately, uh, the, there are uh, today uh, new technologies uh, that offer us uh, new tools, new opportunities to um, for restoring river continuity. Uh, one hand, we have uh, uh, the environmental DNA technology that so use no longer use uh, um, uh, organisms itself, but it is able to extract information from a bulk of environmental sample that could be, for instance, uh, uh, a sample of water. Another technology that is, could be extremely useful uh, for restoring uh, uh, river continuity, connectivity, is uh, remote sensing, and in particular, uh, the drones that are low-cost and smart um, instrument uh, for a quick survey of, uh, uh, of rivers. And then we also have improved uh, um, uh, substantially our modeling capacities uh, of uh, the data that can we produce with these uh, new technologies. And then we also have new opportunities uh, thanks to um, citizen science and local engagement uh, uh, as could be uh, the use development of smartphone apps and citizen science portal that also uh, provide new data, a lot, a big amount of data, but also are useful to involve people, to make people aware about the problem of river continuity and uh, uh, so river fermentation. And then we also have uh, the tool uh, of Google Earth. Google Earth is another useful tool that can, could be used uh, today um, to support uh, uh, restoring uh, river continuity. So, um, the AMBER project uh, um, uh, aim to, to deal with all these challenges using uh, these new opportunities that technology and uh, advances uh, in technologies uh, provide us nowadays and uh, um, aim to uh, produce uh, a number of uh, uh, products uh, that can be used for uh, adaptive management uh, of barriers in European rivers. One um, uh, product, so 
will be uh, uh, the first European Stream Barrier Inventory and Atlas that will be delivered in 2019, that will provide uh, the first uh, most complete uh, picture of uh, river fermentation um, in, uh, of European rivers uh, in a consistent, uh, consistent manner across Europe. Uh, another product uh, is uh, a barrier assessment smart a smartphone app that will be released uh, next spring 2018 and uh, that uh, aim uh, at support supporting the, the, the assessment of river continuity uh, within number but it is also a tool uh, to uh, involve people citizens uh, um, in uh, uh, contributing in the ass assessment of river continuity. Then there are a, a number of other uh, tools uh, that aim at uh, supporting uh, the, uh, the management and the, uh, the decision uh, issue related to um, barriers. So uh, we have uh, developed, uh, we are developing uh, um, a river infrastructure assessment and classification software tool to assess uh, passability and hydropower potential. We uh, have developed a toolkit uh, molecular method. Um, we are going to develop uh, other tools for habitat assessment, uh, uh, rapid, rapid habitat assessment methodolo methodology based on remote sensing. Uh, other habitat modeling tool, toolkit, and also uh, we deal with uh, the problem of uh, the impact of uh, barriers on sediment connectivity. All so this project uh, will, uh, uh, will be uh, implemented uh, with number and uh, the result will be uh, beyond the Atlas and the uh, smartphone app, uh, uh, a best practice with an, an adaptive barrier management in Europe. So, so a book that will be released in 2020 and also a number of scientific publications that are already available on our web portal. All the toolkits, the methods that we are implementing uh, will be, uh, are going to be tested in uh, six main case studies plus, plus other case studies, smaller ones. But these are the main case studies of Amber. And as you can see, they are uh, located in different uh, uh, European uh, areas. So including also um, uh, different uh, local uh, social uh, and uh, uh, economic uh, uh, issue of uh, uh, river barriers. Let me just uh, um, mention this, uh, this tool uh, about uh, uh, the barrier impact uh, uh, on sediment connectivity. This tool is, uh, has been developed by Politecnico di Milano before the AMBER project, but we are now implementing it within AMBER and uh, uh, testing it in some uh, uh, studies uh, within AMBER. Um, this is a tool for um, conceptualization of uh, sediment connectivity at the network scale and that is a tool that has been um, uh, built to support uh, uh, the management uh, uh, of uh, uh, river continuity at the network scale. I won't go into the detail of this, uh, uh, of this tool but uh, I invite you to, to read uh, uh, the paper uh, that uh, describe these methods. So, um, um, the one of the main uh, product of uh, uh, the Amber Atlas will be the European Atlas uh, of River Barriers. Um, this work of compiling uh, an atlas uh, of European barriers is a very huge uh, but necessary effort uh, that we, uh, with the number, are, uh, uh, are carrying on in order to provide a sort of baseline uh, for uh, addressing the, the challenges that I've mentioned and uh, I listed uh, before. 
um, and that so could be used as a baseline to uh, improve our uh, um, the management of uh, river fermentation and river bias in Europe. Um, the success of this work depends on all the Amber Consortium, but uh, it is led by a group of persons that I would like to, to acknowledge and mention uh, here, and that are from the Politecnico di Milano in Italy, from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, the Waterfish Migration Foundation, and uh, uh, the CNSS from France. So this, is, this work is uh, the results of the hard work of this group of people, uh, mostly. Um, so river fermentation is not only an um, European issue, but is a, a worldwide issue. So when we started to work with, uh, for the Atlas, uh, uh, we looked around us and looked at which, were the which was the information available uh, at European, but at the worldwide scale as well. This work, this map, show you um, a work that has been published uh, on 2010 on nature, uh, and that show the, the, the pressure, different pressure that uh, impact uh, rivers uh, around the world. Uh, this map deals with uh, uh, the density of barriers of major dams, so higher than 10 meters around the world. And so, as you can see, almost all countries uh, at least all continents are affected by the problem of river fermentation because of the, the, the barrier. When we zoom in at the European scale with this information that is available at the worldwide scale, uh, so including concerning only dams higher than 10 meters, we can see that uh, um, the situation does not seem to be so bad. So, uh, the density of barrier higher than 10 meters is not uh, uh, is not big in Europe. But so this is the the, the most complete information consistent uh, at the, uh, uh, the European uh, scale concerning barrier higher than 10 meters. But we started to collect uh, a number of databases, and uh, especially the databases that are available online uh, and so we we plotted the same these databases on our uh, on our uh, maps and look in these these databases uh, in particular uh, includes also uh, the information on uh, barriers that are uh, lower than 10 meters so um, the situation for barrier higher than 10 meters is this one. But when we include databases that have a more detailed information, we can see that uh, uh, probably the problem of river fermentation is worse than what we, we expected. If we also add information that we can uh, reach at the regional level, uh, so detailed information on small barrier at the regional levels, we, we see, we can see effectively that uh, the problem of river fermentation is uh, higher than, is worse than what we can expect simply looking at uh, information at the worldwide scale for uh, a larger dam. So, uh, if we compare this situation also in terms of, uh, so in terms of, uh, uh, of barrier height, the first uh, uh, plot uh, the top show the distribution of uh, uh, barrier um, within different barrier height for the database available at the worldwide scale. So uh, the database that mainly include the barrier higher than 10 meters. And so it seems that uh, um, this distribution is equally distributed amo amongst different barrier height. But if we look at uh, the other three graphs, so the databases that are detailed, that include also um, uh, smaller barriers, we can see that the bulk of river fermentation is because of the presence of small barriers. 
This is also comparable. The last, uh, the last uh, uh, graph uh, on the bottom is uh, um, the uh, derived from the U.S. national database. So uh, in uh, in U.S. they have a, a, a national database concerning all the river barriers. So this is a complete one, the same uh, complete information that we would achieve achieve in Europe, and it shows that. Uh, effectively, the problem of river fragmentation seems to derive from the presence of smaller barriers that are uh, small but are widespread uh, uh, and uh, uh, real dense. So, um, our work um, first, uh, after this uh, uh, qualitative assessment of uh, the data that were available, uh, started to um, collect uh, all the information on uh, data availability at the European scale. Um, first of all, we, we analyzed the type of data that are available. Uh, even if most of the country have information, uh, have national inventory consistent uh, uh, collected uh, at the national scale, there are a lot of countries that have only regional inventory. So that probably are not consistent, are not providing uh, consistent information uh, uh, at the national scale. Looking within these different databases, we can see that also the type of information that is present is different from a database to another. So uh, when we compare different databases across Europe, we cannot derive the same type of, of information. Um, so not, not all the databases record, for, for instance, the type of barrier. Not all the databases uh, record the height of barrier. Uh, an, an important information that is missing, uh, largely missing from these databases is uh, uh, the indication of the presence or not of a fish pass uh, in, uh, in correspondence of, of a barrier. So, uh, from this first survey, uh, our impression was that uh, effectively river fermentation of European river is largely unknown uh, at the European level, at least. So, uh, this convinced us once more uh, a need of a, a pan-European atlas, because the problems are many. So we have national, national and regional, and sometimes even more detailed and smaller scale databases. We have scattered data availability, so data are not uh, uh, the same across between different databases across Europe. Some databases are incomplete, uh, so some of them collect information, yes, at the national scale, but only concerning some types of barriers. So we do not have a complete information. And often uh, the information on small barriers is missing, uh, even if we have seen that these represent the biggest uh, uh, problem for river fermentation. So we don't know which is the, the, the extent of river fermentation for European river, but we need this type of information because uh, river fermentation is one of the most uh, uh, problem to reach the, a good ecological state. So the, the, the Amber European Barrier Atlas could represent uh, at least a starting solution, a starting point uh, to start to deal with uh, Within our uh, European Barrier Atlas, uh, so we decide to uh, include uh, all types uh, of barrier. Uh, so all barriers matter for us uh, for river fermentation. So we collected uh, uh, all existing databases, even if uh, at the end uh, we decided to uh, display in our atlas only all the, the databases that are at least collected consistently at the national scale. Um, we defined a sort of barrier identity card, so we defined a set of information that uh, will be included in the atlas and that uh, we believe 
that should be recorded for a barrier reporting uh, um, aim. Um, these information are basic information mainly on barrier location, uh, barrier type, uh, uh, barrier height, and uh, the year of construction. Um, we foreseen a, a, a work also of post-processing of our information that is going parallel with uh, a process of data validation uh, of uh, the collected databases, because since they are uh, different from each other, they have been collected differently uh, in uh, the different European countries, they need uh, to be validated to provide the picture at the pan-European scale. What we expect from, uh, from our atlas, uh, we expect uh, that uh, um, we will have uh, a, a better idea about river fragmentation at the pan-European scale. We will have information about data accessibility throughout Europe and the gaps that are present in existing databases. We will provide some, bar some protocol for barrier reporting. We will storage this information that will be then uh, probably, possibly also uh, available in the future and also updated in the future. Uh, we also want to use the information uh, from the, the Atlas to uh, infer uh, to uh, provide uh, information for the assessment of the impact of uh, barriers uh, on the ecosystem. Uh, we, we want that this tool could support uh, management issue. Uh, I think, for instance, uh, uh, to the Balkans, where uh, we know that the density of barriers is very low, but there is a, a very uh, huge program of barrier construction during uh, for the next year. Uh, and also, we want that we would like that uh, the Atlas could support uh, uh, further research advances uh, uh, in uh, the uh, for the topic of river continuity. So, on one hand, uh, the, we would like that we expect that the Amber Atlas uh, will improve uh, management uh, uh, the management of river barriers. So kind of pan-European pan analysis on the river fermentation. And on the other hand, we, uh, we will expect that the, the, the Atlas uh, will provide uh, um, a better, uh, a greater picture of uh, river fermentation, also useful for uh, research and to link this uh, to uh, the ecological uh, assessment uh, of um, I mentioned before uh, the Amber Smartphone app. Uh, the main aim of this app, uh, as I told you before, is uh, to um, uh, make people aware about the problem of uh, river fermentation and so the presence of barrier along our rivers. Uh, the app will be released in spring 2018, so next spring. But this app uh, is also useful uh, in these steps uh, with a number for uh, data validation. I will uh, illustrate you data validation uh, right after. Uh, about the dam existence and, existence and the effective data coverage of uh, barrier across our, uh, in our rivers. But the AMR app is also a means in the future for uh, updating the, the, the data available. So, updating our uh, Amber Atlas uh, through a citizen science program. And so, I mean, also for uh, supporting barrier monitoring. So, also a, a, a useful management tools probably uh, in the future. Um, for, uh, so, given the, 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 the available situation, given the situation we have, we had to uh, define a pre precise strategy for data collection uh, of existing databases with our atlas. Uh, what we, um, we decided uh, was to uh, divide Europe in three uh, European countries in, in three uh, different regions 
um, for which adopt uh, different uh, strategies for data collection. Um, so, uh, and for strategies that are strategy mainly in time. So, at first we started to collect information for under countries, then for uh, the under network, so where we have uh, institutional connection uh, with uh, these countries, and then uh, and another, a different strategies for uh, under, for countries where we do not have any connection. Um, in particular, for, for this uh, uh, last group, uh, we decided to not proceed uh, to collect uh, data at the country level, but to collect uh, data at, uh, uh, at regional, uh, more larger regional level. So, for instance, uh, the Danube region, the Balkan region, and uh, the uh, Baltic region. Uh, the progress uh, uh, updated at uh, uh, now are so we already we progressed more than what we expected. So uh, we now, now we have uh, 13 out of 14 uh, uh, databases for the other countries. Uh, we collected three out of eight uh, databases for the other network, and uh, we uh, have uh, collected more than 50% of the databases for the not other, uh, not other countries. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the results uh, of uh, this data collection, um, mainly for other countries. Um, so this picture show you uh, for available databases, uh, the density of barrier that are higher than 10 meters. And uh, except some uh, uh, exception, um, the value, the density value is uh, comparable uh, across Europe uh, for barrier higher than 10 meters. But when we, and, and uh, also the information available, so the, 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 the key parameter, but what we can see is that the key parameters that we want to include uh, within the barrier atlas uh, are not uh, all uh, recorded uh, consistently within the, these uh, uh, databases. Um, in particular, the year of barrier construction is missing from all databases, unless we, uh, even if we uh, consider that this was a real important information, mainly if we think to um, the fact that barriers, especially ma major dams, uh, start to uh, get in order. Uh, and so maybe they will uh, need uh, some prioritization uh, management uh, within the next future. So the, the problem of uh, the dam removal. But this information is missing. So uh, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, we don't know this kind of information at the European scale. We also uh, See that uh, for, uh, for for instance for the fish pass uh, uh, the fish pass uh, information as expected is not really um, included within uh, uh, the most most of the uh, collected databases. But uh, we decide to include uh, this information in our atlas, even if at the beginning we we we, we thought to do not include that. Um, so the same picture when we include uh, uh, information on a uh, uh, barrier uh, lower than 10 meters. So as you can see, the, the information is, uh, uh, is not consistent at the root. So, but uh, uh, when the information is available, so France uh, or uh, England, for instance, England and Swiss, we see that uh, this information is uh, comparable. So probably for countries where we, uh, information, this information is missing, we should expect uh, instead a density like for, uh, the, the, like for, for instance, France, uh, England, and Wales. So this 
first data collection um, confirmed as uh, our worries. So there are very detailed and consistent databases, as for instance in France. But the, on the other hand, we have, uh, like in Italy, uh, databases that uh, only record uh, major dams, that are, however, are co consistent uh, uh, at the national scale. So they deserve to be included in our atlas. In other cases, we have scattered information, so we are or partial information. So we have uh, only the location of barriers in, in, in some cases, or we don't. We miss the information on barrier height in other cases. So. Um, we have to deal uh, with this kind of information, information that is uh, uh, not consistent at the European scale, that is scattered at the European scale, and that is could be incomplete at the European scale. Uh, let, let's look, for instance, at the, uh, the barrier types uh, for the, the databases from other countries. So information on barrier types uh, is provided by most of the databases, but at the end we have uh, more than almost 300 different types of barriers collected in existing databases. So this information is not useful at all, so we need to, uh, to clean up this information. Probably in some cases we will discover that some of the barriers that are included in these databases are not really barriers uh, for uh, the uh, river continuity. So we, we need to, to face with this problem. Also for fish pass, so I told you before that fish pass information, presence types, is not uh, uh, consistently recorded across Europe. And even when it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, recorded, so we have a, a very huge amount of fish pass type included, and not always this information is included. So these are the, the, the data uh, with which we have to work, we have to, to deal with. And uh, so uh, it, is, uh, it, it emerged the need for uh, validate this uh, existing uh, this data. So we developed uh, a validation strategy that combine, on one hand, the first step, field validation, extensive field validation, and uh, in a second step, uh, based on uh, this field validation, that we provide a numerical estimation uh, of uh, uh, barrier density and so of river fermentation uh, in, uh, uh, of, um, of our uh, European. Uh, Pan-European Atlas. Concerning field validation, so uh, this is uh, an extensive uh, field validation that will be, is going to be um, applied to uh, most part of uh, uh, Europe where we have data, uh, consistent at the national scale, and uh, for each database, so mainly for each country, but for each database, we are going to survey 100 kilometers of river network, uh, split in five rivers, uh, so 20 kilometers section for in, in five rivers per country. The five rivers are going to be selected, selected to be representative of a wide range of river types, mainly in terms of river altitude, uh, river slopes, so some uh, energy, and uh, river types in terms of single thread or multi thread river. Uh, once uh, this section, uh, these rivers and this section have been selected, uh, the, the field work uh, consist, uh, will consist in uh, working along river banks and recording uh, some uh, features features that are uh, consistent uh, with the, uh, the barrier identity card, so the variable, the key variable that we consider important for barrier reporting and monitoring, and that are also consistent with the, um, the variables that can be uh, collected uh, by the uh, smartphone application. So mainly barrier location, barrier type and height in high classes, the 
barrier use, so is, is a barrier still in use or not, and uh, the barrier width, so if the barrier extends uh, across the entire riverway. The, since the problem of barrier types uh, is, uh, uh, is, is huge, uh, we decided to um, class uh, barriers according to these uh, uh, seven types. So uh, all the barriers will be classified as dam for major structure or where that include uh, where includes uh, both uh, downstream uh, lowland wares for bed stabilization or water supply, for instance, but also um, uh, mountain uh, wares for uh, for always that stabilization. It also includes, uh, uh, so the barrier types uh, also include the sluice, uh, so that have mo mobile gates uh, to regulate uh, the water flow, and also smaller structures like ford, culverts, and uh, small uh, bed stabilization structures like uh, bed seal and ramps. So all the barriers that we are going to uh, survey will be uh, classified as one of these uh, six types and these barrier types uh, will be also used uh, to uh, process uh, the 300 uh, types uh, that are present in the uh, in, in the available in the existing databases um, we the, the we applied uh, this uh, field validation uh, in a test application in Italy last uh, spring. And so I show you some of the results now. Um, so we select different river, rivers uh, in different river basins uh, in Italy, uh, rivers that differ in terms of uh, uh, altitude, slopes, uh, river type, uh, but also in terms of uh, 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 land use. Um, so we have uh, uh, three uh, alpine uh, uh, rivers and two Apennines rivers. Uh, along our 100 kilometers field validation work, uh, we um, countered 43 barriers for 100 kilometers river length, barriers that uh, uh, are so we we found uh, uh, all the barrier types uh, uh, that we so the, the classes of barrier types uh, that we included in our analysis, uh, but the most uh, uh, frequent one is where uh, so barriers that have uh, in average uh, less than five uh, meters uh, are less than five meters high. Uh, if you calculate the barrier density uh, of our field work, uh, we found uh, a density of one barrier is two kilometers. Uh, that is of several <laughs> magnitude higher than what we have, the density that we have uh, simply looking at the national database uh, at the Italian level, that is uh, uh, that concern only main dams higher than 10 meters. Uh, we try to um, link these results with some drivers. So, as expected, uh, we have uh, higher dams. Uh, so, dams bigger ones are uh, founded in uh, in uh, higher section, higher river section. Uh, we also try to see if there is a difference in terms of uh, uses of uh, uh, the barriers across our field survey. So the most uh, uh, frequent uh, use um, of barrier uh, uh, of, uh, of barrier surveyed uh, with the field work is for bed stabilization. Uh, so um, the most of the barrier are barrier lower than. Uh, meters. Um, 
And then we also compared uh, our results with other existing databases at smaller uh, local scales. So databases that are not uh, collected at the national scale, that are not consistent at the national scale. Uh, a first comparison is, uh, so in these databases, so, uh, for instance, for the Piemonte region, the, the, maps, the map in the left, so you have uh, uh, the, the, the green triangle are the, the, the national barriers, so the, the, the barriers collected in, in the, included in the national database, and as you can see, the, the density of barriers when you include also regional databases is completely different. And then we compared so this information, this all these databases with our field work. Uh, for some rivers, so the Scrivia and Dora Baltia are both uh, uh, two uh, rivers, uh, uh, up, up in the rivers, so tributaries of the Po River. Um, none of the database at the local level record the barrier that we have observed during our field work, except one dam of national interest. So um, even the detailed regional local databases are not recording all the existing information, the real information. Um, for the Orco River is the most mountain one. Only two barriers observed during the field work are also displayed in a regional database. And uh, two more barriers are recorded uh, in, in a regional database, but we didn't observe it, uh, this barrier during our field work. So also the issue of uh, the updating uh, issue of this information is uh, uh, rised up from this uh, field work. So uh, probably even if uh, some databases are more detailed, uh, they are not up to date. Only for the Arno River, the Arno River, we, we surveyed a section that crosses the city of Florence. We found nine out of the 11 barriers are recorded also in a, in a regional database. So uh, we, we saw that our field work, uh, we, our field work uh, uh, rises up uh, the real showed as uh, the real situation of uh, uh, barrier presence uh, in, uh, for the surveyed reaches. And uh, so the, the comparison of density, one barrier is two kilometers, is not comparable with the density uh, of, the, of uh, barriers at the national scale. But when we look our results, this is preliminary speculation, but when we look at the results at the, at the EU scale, the EU scale, European scale for most detailed databases, for instance, France or England and Wales, we can see that uh, the density of barrier that we found uh, uh, on the field is comparable to the, uh, the results, the density of barrier uh, of these uh, very detailed databases. So, um, this is, these are first results. Now we are uh, doing uh, uh, the field validation work on all uh, European, uh, all Amber countries. It is almost complete. And then we also select some uh, uh, relevant other uh, databases and countries uh, for uh, other European countries. And we will perform this uh, field validation also in these countries. And the, 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 the expected outputs, outputs are so to combine the information that would be um, uh, as complete as possible for the Atlas. So looking at uh, uh, existing databases that are consistent on the national scale. So we will compare this information with our very detailed field data validation that will be also performed at the European scale and comparing this information, what we want to, um, uh, to derive is uh, uh, 
unexpected variable density uh, pan European scale, um, also looking at uh, uh, information uh, like uh, the geographical position of barrier or others. Sorry, Barbara, I think you Okay, yes, you're... I, I finished it. Oh, no, your sound so, was gone for a minute, but it's back now. So. Okay. So, um, just uh, uh, to, to summarize, uh, our, our uh, objective is to combine the information of the Atlas so on, on existing databases, uh, collected at European scale, and field data uh, that we are going to collect uh, at very detailed uh, uh, information uh, from field work that are always are going to be collected uh, at the European scale. So combine this two information to infer then uh, an expected barrier density uh, at the pan European scale that can be used to assess uh, the extent of, re of river fermentation and then to link that also with uh, the, the ecological status uh, uh, rather than uh, so to provide uh, uh, tools uh, information for a, a, a more um, effective uh, river uh, uh, barrier management for rivers in European rivers. So, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Barbara. This was really informative and uh, very clear. Um, uh, we missed a few words at the end, but uh, but uh, I think uh, with the slides it was fine. Uh, so thank you, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I heard a lot of uh, interesting things. I would like to um, to ask people, the participants here, if they have any questions, to post them in the chat box on the right. Uh, we already had one comment from uh, Manuel Montoni during the presentation he said that concerning the French rivers, there is a very well-structured database about obstacles and their nature. Um, later on, you also presented this. So he mentioned the ROE, the Referential des Obstacles à l'Écoulement. So probably, you, I see you're nodding, so probably um, the Amber Project um, knows about this database, but I wanted to mention it uh, anyway. Um, so if anyone has a question for Barbara, please um, go ahead and post it uh, in the chat box. In the meantime, ah, okay, I see there's already one coming from uh, Van Arad Hem, um, saying, shall this mapping done by the community itself or only by technical person? I think um, this, this refers to the citizen uh, science or involvement. Yes. Um, the, the app uh, now is in, in a, a beta version, which are testing it internally, but uh, this will be released to the wide public, and so we expect that a lot of people will use it to improve uh, our knowledge about where barriers are, which kind of barrier um, we have in our, our rivers, and so probably also to use it for uh, supporting uh, barrier management, so everyone can use it. It's it will record a very simple and easy information. Okay, and uh, follow up question was which one is more powerful for advocacy? Which sorry? Which one? I think uh, either from the community or from technical uh, people. Which which would be more powerful for? Or advocacy? Um, I think that the scale is different and also the aims. So um, the, the, the technical contribution maybe is more consistent, but uh, if the app is used by a large public, but a lot of people, then the number will also, the number of information will also could be used also with the machine learning uh, models and so on and so it depends it depends on the use that we will have <laughs> yeah yeah agree um anna from uh portugal she's asking 
Um, hi, Barbara. Does the Amber project has partners in Portugal that can give information concerning the location of existing dams? Uh, Portugal is one of our main uh, issue for data collection indeed. Uh, we have problem to, 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 to get this information. Uh, the, for the Portugal, there is uh, any uh, there is not a, a database at the national scale, but the databases are at the regional water basin scale. So uh, we tried, but we failed. So if you have some good contact uh, for Portugal, I'm open to, to it. So yeah. contact me, please. Please contact Because we have problem in Portugal, yes. <laughs> and the email address is here on this slide. Yeah. Um, Monica's asking, um, well, she's saying thank you, and it was very interesting. Um, the Atlas don't show any information for the internal basins of Catalonia, but we have an inventory, and we have sent the information to the Ember project. Um, is the information updated, and how can we send this information? Uh, I don't remember exactly for uh, the Catalonia, but uh, if you have sent it, uh, so uh, we probably have it. Uh, we will use it for the comparison of different databases. So the Atlas will include the information on the national level. So you have uh, two databases at the national level in Spain, and we will use the regional databases to validate uh, together with our field validation this existing information on the national scale. So thank you. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Anna said that she will contact you for... Uh information about large dams. Um, Yasmina is asking, um, also thanking for the great presentation, and she would like to know if uh, non-amber countries, such as Croatia, will be included in the field validation test. Uh, it may. Yes, it will be included uh, uh, as uh, for the non-amber countries, so we have adopted a strategy of uh, collecting databases at wider regional area for wider uh, wider regional area so Croatia will be included in the Balkan area uh, so we probably will validate some some uh, uh, rivers also in in Croatia but in, in with this aim so validating this database at the Balkan Balkan uh, scale okay um, Rodri Thomas is asking, um, uh, thanks for this presentation, I've missed it, but what existing data set is Amber using for barriers in England and Wales? Uh, these are uh, databases of uh, environmental uh, agency, I guess, and are data, data that uh, um, have been uh, uh, probably modeled from a uh, um, uh, digital elevation model that have been derived from digital elevation model. So if you, if you, if you want to know uh, uh, more in detail, uh, I can tell you which, which one, which database, but is uh, from an environmental agency. And these, uh, so these are databases for England and Wales are collected um, with the, um, with the same methodology, so they are consistent uh, among, among each other. Okay, someone's asking, are the case studies going to assess the impact of barriers in those rivers, or are these barriers proposed for removal also? Um, I cannot answer to this question. <laughs> um, okay. If you don't know, then need uh, it. Uh, we need it. It's not a, a decision that that we can took now. We can take now. Okay, clear. Um, Rob is asking um, uh, about the height scale of the structures. Surely, for organisms, a height above a few meters is unpassable. So it doesn't really matter if the dam is 10 or 20 meters high. Wouldn't it be more interesting to focus on smaller scales? Some fish jump over a half meter, some will not. It would also make the project more interesting for low-lying countries and regions. I, I do agree. 
completely. Uh, so uh, this is one of the points uh, that we want to ra raise up with our project. So all barrier matters. Smaller one, maybe more than higher one. But we need, uh, so the aim of the AMBER project is to provide a pan-European overview of barrier density and river fermentation. And we will provide this kind of, uh, um, also this kind of uh, uh, issue, we will raise this issue in our analysis. But at, at before, we need uh, to have this pan-European uh, overview uh, of uh, uh, river fermentation. Okay. Uh, Jasmine is asking if we can please send the link where we can download this presentation and also the presentation from the previous session. Uh, perhaps I can answer this. Uh, we will um, definitely uh, upload this presentation to uh, the website of Wetlands International European Association. Um, please uh, go to the website europe.wetlands.org and um, Probably in, in, uh, today I will be uploading both the presentation and the recordings, so you can watch the session back. Um, you can also find the link from the previous session there already. Um, so uh, europe.wetlands.org, and there's a you will see a page on the whole webinar series where you can find the links. So we're now this is the second session out of uh, uh, out of six already planned. Um, so have a look and try to uh, see the other upcoming sessions as well. Um, also concerning the question previously about the dam removal, we will have two um, sessions on dam removal. So um, if you're interested in this topic, please uh, check the dates and uh, uh, and we will also open up the uh, uh, the registration form for more registration. So please go ahead. Um, I don't know, Barbara, if you would like to add anything else about uh, the last question uh, on the presentation. Mm, no, uh, I'm okay. Yeah, the uh, link uh, to Amber and uh, and uh, Barbara's uh, uh, research gate profile is pro is provided here. Mm -hmm. So please also stay tuned and so uh, follow us and uh, we'll try to do our best to support the um, river fermentation issue uh, in the future. Yeah. Um, I see no other questions coming in, but I had a, one more question myself. Um, you showed um, us the investment um, in pumped hydro storage, the expected investment of 26 billion euros uh, until 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was wondering if the AMBER project also assesses these types of investments uh, and what it means for new dams and barriers. So you're not just assessing the existing ones, are you also assessing, assessing investments in future dams and barriers and where they will be? Uh, built um, this will be done um, in to some extent for the Balkan area mm -hmm. where we know that there are uh, a, a, a plan of uh, new barrier construction um, I'm not sure uh, it, I don't want to, to say something wrong but I'm not sure that we are um, assessing also uh, the impact of this assessment. So uh, we are mainly uh, focusing on uh, the impact of present uh, barrier, but I, I don't want to be uh, to, to, to say something wrong. So please, uh, uh, okay. I, can, I can check that and answer you more in detail. But for the, the new ones, uh, our focus is mainly on the Balkan region. So, uh, where there is, we know there is a plan, uh, a very huge plan of new barrier construction. Yeah. And it's, I'm scared about this <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yes, so some uh, maps of the plant uh, uh, dams. So, yeah. 
Okay, I think um, all questions that we that were asked, I think that's it. Um, there are no more questions. So thank you, Barbara, for this uh, very interesting presentation. And thanks everyone for participating uh, and hope to see you in the upcoming sessions as well. Thank you and have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.